Hello, and welcome to Notes in 9. I'm David Leedy. Episode 24, Fancy Type Ad, Getting Fancy with Your Inputs. Okay, today we're going to talk about fancy type ahead, and this is better than the built-in type ahead because it's, the user starts typing and now more information appears. Maybe it's a graphic, maybe it's it's like a table of data, so it helps them to select, better select the record that they're, they're going for. Uh, and this all started uh, well over a year ago, I think, from a great blog post by Tim Traconi. Um, and, and here's the link. And, and about a year or so ago, I tried to make this work from Tim's uh, blog post, and, and I couldn't get it to work. Um, so uh, I, I didn't use it. Um, but then um, I was looking at an internal app the other day where Declan Lynch was using uh, the, the fancy type ahead. And, and between Declan's article and, and Tim's uh, article, Declan's code and Tim's article, I was able to get it to work, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Um, now, Declan Lynch has, has done a lot of open NTF projects. Um, his latest is iWatch, uh, which is like a Google Alert X page app. So you might want to check that out. Anyway, so let's get right into the demo, and we're going to talk about the, the fancy type ad. Okay, so here's kind of, the, this is the post that started it all. This is a, by uh, Tim Traconi um, from GVS, and, and here's the URL. And, and usually I just go to his site and search for, uh, like, fancy type ahead or type ahead to, to, to get this. And, and it, it, this is very well explained, though originally I, I didn't understand it um, back in the day. So, but but I, I recommend you you reading this and, and, and dissecting this before you try this. Okay, so what is it we're talking about? We're talking about this, this fancy type head. Let me kind of show you my version. So you start typing and a name appears. Okay, so, you know, it it's, gives you a little more information than, um, than just, just the built-in type ahead. And it just pops up and you, you type type it. Now, now what I've done is I, I've, I've kind of added an enhancement to this where instead of just having to search by, in my case, her last name, I've also put in, in some code to would allow me in the same type ahead to search by first name. Okay, so it gives a user, in, in this case, last name or first name, whichever you start typing with, it will find it. Um, now, what I've not figured out how to do, uh, the first of couple things I've not figured out how to do is how to sort the list. Um, so you see these last names aren't sorted. And, and even if I did type in, in like by last name or so, you know, here's a Smithson, here's a Smith. Uh, there, there's no sorting to this last name. I, I gave it a shot and I, I couldn't get it to work. Uh, the next oddity I have, just in case you notice it, is the name is appearing over here. Um, and, and, and Domino Designer is appearing over here. And I'm sure it's some dumb CSS thing, but uh, I haven't figured it out yet myself. So anyway, how does this work? So here's our little field, a little um, edit box, and it has on it typepad. Okay, so we come down here to suggestions, the type ahead. I'm referencing a function. So okay, it's a simple server-side JavaScript function. Okay, well, not simple, but uh, it looks simple at this stage. And, and what you've got to do here in this box is you've got to create a variable. Not unlike, you know, working with a repeat control. But if you look at the all properties, there's no variable here. So you've got to go to the outline and click on this Ajax type ahead business. Okay? And you, you don't ignore the outline. There's hidden stuff in here. So, that, so we come down, down here to data. And there's two things you got to do. One is you got to give it this a variable name, which I've called search value, and you got to tell this value markup thing to be true, okay? And then the documentation says says whole XML markup or, or simply a list, which I'm sure means something. But that's what lets this work. So that's what's saying is is we're going to return back what this the drop down list should look like. So the function, okay, name type ahead is the function. I'm passing in that search value variable. And really the first thing I do is I, I assign it to a, a lookup value. Why, why I did that, I'm not sure. Um, and then this var matches. This is kind of like this is kind of like a JavaScript array slash object. I think this is technically an object and not an array because it's not like like the, the, the square brackets. Um, okay, but so that creates this, mem this object in memory for us to work with. This area here is because I'm binding to a foreign database. Um, I, I just end up doing that a lot. And, and so I'm just setting up my views. 
here's where it starts to work where we're going to say we're going to create a notes view entry collection called matching entries of the view get all entries by key and then this lookup value and we're, and we're throwing out any there's any like dashes and we're throwing that out okay so th that's all it's doing so now we're doing a get all entries by key okay well we can iterate over that so here's where we start looping through this all entries by key and what we're doing is we're starting to to get what it finds you know that's matching it as you type and we're going to put it inside this matches object that we created up top and and this is again array or object i'm, I'm a little iffy on that I, again i think it's an object but it has lotus script list type capabilities so we can say if if it doesn't already exist in matches then we're going to add it kind of like dealing with a list but what's different here is and again this may be json i'm, I'm not 100 sure because we're adding property value pairs so so we've got you know the the property and we've got the value so i'm throwing in first name last name address etc so all these things are in one object of this list or array so that's that's a very powerful uh, addition that we, to a um, server-side JavaScript that we don't really have in Lotus Script. Okay, now this is a code block here where I, I loop through and, and I'm doing this the, going by last name. What I've done here is I've copied that entire code block, but I'm pointing it to a different view by first name. So this is what allows you to type by first name to find it by a different value as well. And that's the kind of stuff that really, really that users really like, you know. Don't don't make me have to search for a last name box or first name box. If you can, combine it in two, uh, or combine both in, into the one box. So this just does the exact same thing. So it's gonna find it depending on how you're typing. It's gonna find it one way or the other, and and in both, you know, I'm only bringing back like nine records, um, or actually ten, I guess. Um, so it doesn't get get too nuts. Okay. Then when when that's that's just selecting the documents. Now we got to present them back to the to the uh, the browser, and to do that we need to use an unordered list. Okay, why? That's just what you need to do. So I've got a table inside, you know, a list item of the unordered list, and the the key here is um, what you've got to do is here's where I'm building this table that that I return, and if you notice this span class informal, that actually means ignore it. So it, it's got to be informal. It's got to be the span class. I've got no CSS in this database with this class, so this is kind of like it's really kind of like hard coded, I, I guess you'd say. So because last name, this dash, and first name is not wrapped in an informal span class, that is what gets sent sent back to what you save. So this goes back to your field. Then everything else here is is just used in the table. So this this all gets presented in the table, but only this makes it back to the field. Now the third thing I've not figured out is, is especially in this case because you know people might have the same name, is how do I invisibly get a key to this guy, and then save that back? So I, I, I've not figured that out yet. So so right now in my world I've got to make sure I've got a unique key basically, and that does go back to that field, and it's visible, and then I parse it out or whatnot. So if anyone knows how to do that, uh, drop me a line. Um, and then we just finish off this uh, this table and then the UL and then we return the return list and hopefully between this and, and I'll post this code but between this and, and, and Tim's article um, you can kind of play with fancy type -in. and that's the demo so uh, now again uh, so there I've got some some things I want to try and improve on on this technique uh, some things I want to learn uh, so if you have any questions um, well, good luck getting an answer out of me. But if I can, I, I, I will certainly try to help you. And here's my contact information. And thank you for your time.